We left Fishkill a while ago. We crossed into Pennsylvania. It was raining for a while, and it's still raining a little, but I'm trying not to use the windshield wipers because you know who really hates them. We are in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. This is the town, or the city, I guess. Lebanon is a city. Feels like a town to me, but it's what they call a third class city, which has to do with, I don't know, I think it has to do with the population size. But it feels like a town. Ah, ah, oh, sorry, ah. buddy. I forgot. The original European settlers got here in 1720, I think. There were the Stites family and the Light family, and they named the place Stites But before they came, there were the Shawnee, the Susquehannock, the Gawanese. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. The Lenape, which also, you say Delaware is another word for them. And the Nanticoke, or Nanticoke people. I'm not sure which. I got to get better at pronouncing these things. Anyway, from what I've read, the, they were all pretty peaceful people, but the settlers found it necessary to build a fort, like they usually do. And they built a fort and called it Light Fort, after the other family. <laughs> Surprise. One thing I found out when I was researching the, the area is that Lebanon, and I don't know if this is current or way in the past, but Lebanon was at some point or other recognized as the second least stressful city in the U.S. This is apparently based on crime rates, divorce rates, and employment rates. Looks pretty stress-free, I guess. I don't know what city came in first in that contest, but I'll have to check that out sometime. I would like to know what is the least stressful city. The place I'm headed to, where we're planning to spend the night, is here in Lebanon, and it's called Stover's Dam Park. And here it is. Boy, it's so sunny over here, it doesn't even look like it rained at all. As soon as I pulled in, I realized it's Saturday. I haven't really been keeping track of the days of the week, but this place is jammed. Lots of tents. I don't know if these people are camping or they're just here for the day. Anyway, I also just figured out it's the first real weekend of the recreational season here in the Northeast, and it's also the opening day of trout season. So, yeah, it's a little jammed. Oh, and look, there's another schoolie. This one looks kind of like a fresh conversion, like they maybe they just picked it up. I wonder where the schoolie people are. The deal with this place is it's a city park. It's a chunk of nature right in the middle of the city of Lebanon, and it has a lake that's just under 24 acres. Are you talking to them? Yeah, they're barking at you. The rest of the grounds are somewhere between 140 and 175 acres, depending which article you look at. I guess there's ball fields, picnic grounds, there's even a community theater in here somewhere. But the, the main thing, the highlight is the recreational water sports in particular. Fishing seems to be the big thing. Okay, so it turns out because it is Saturday, the place that issues the permits is closed. I can't get a permit to camp. The sign says that violators will be prosecuted and that's all I need to get prosecuted for camping. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to camp here. Well, Millie's going to enjoy the day here, even if I have to sleep in another Home Depot tonight. I wish I had a boat. Maybe I'll get one of those blow-up kayaks or something, because that would really be fun someplace like this. So I just had a really interesting experience. It's kind of like an example of how sometimes you just have to get out of your own way. We all carry things into grown-up life, I think, or at least I do. Uh, worldview stuff, you know, that comes from a long time ago, like from childhood even. And sometimes when I'm feeling kind of fragile, like I have been lately, that stuff kind of pops to the surface more because, you know, you start reaching back for these old tools that maybe helped you at some point. Like, for example, a person who maybe didn't get enough attention when they were a kid might start to feel super sensitive that they're not being heard or seen or whatever. You know, in, in my case, I got a lot of negative attention as a kid. So I've been feeling like I was getting stared at here, <laughs> which, you know, I guess in, in general is understandable because I'm in a funky blue bus. I'm a woman here alone. And frankly, I think I might be the only woman here alone. There's mostly families and then there's some groups of men and even like a couple groups of teenagers. But yeah, I'm, I mean, I am definitely different than the average recreationer around me. So people might be looking at me, but I tend to put 
Oh, thank you, buddy. I tend to put a negative spin on things like that in my head. Like I saw these two guys and they kept like looking over at me and then looking and then they were talking kind of low. And, you know, they looked like they were here to fishermen. And I thought, okay, those guys are talking about me. At least that was my perception. And actually it turned out to be true, but not for the reasons I thought. So what I do sometimes, I start avoiding people. I think, okay, I'm an odd duck here, pardon the pun. And I start to like look away, not make eye contact. I might even leave, but you know, I really wanted to camp here. Plus I'm really just trying to get over myself. So I just walked right up to these two guys and I said, excuse me, do you know how I could maybe get a permit to camp here? Cause the permit office is closed and I'd really like to camp. And one of the guys says, oh yeah, hang on a second. I have the ranger's phone number in my phone. Or he might have said the warden, it might be fish and game. But anyway, I have the guy's number here in my phone. Let me give him a call. And he did. He gave him a call. It didn't really work out because the ranger or whoever he was said that he couldn't give out permits on the fly. So he couldn't really give me a permit. But I felt good because these guys were super nice to me. And, you know, here in my head, I had this whole spin going. And then as soon as I was about to walk away, the other guy, not the one who made the phone call, but the other guy says, oh, hang on a second. I just realized something. I'm leaving because it's going to rain and I don't feel like hanging out. If you want to camp, you can have my permit. You're parked in my space anyway. <laughs> and that's when I found out why they were staring at me because I was parked in the guy's parking space that goes with his permitted camping space. And they were trying to decide whether to tell me or not, or let me sit there for a while. So he gave me his permit and now I'm set for the night. I had a great sleep here last night. The place just really cleared out at dusk. All the tents came down, all the people left, including the schooly people. So I never did get to meet those other bus people. I hope you can hear me over all this wind. I keep trying to wait for the wind to stop, but it doesn't stop. They have all these great trails through the woods here. Captain is having a blast and we are like literally the only people on the trails because anybody else who's here is on the water. So Stover's Dam was built in 1821. It was originally part of a farm owned by the Light family, remember them? They're the ones with the fort. And they sold it to a guy named John Stover, so that's where the name of the place comes from. It had a couple different owners over the years, and it ended up in the hands of Bethlehem Steel. And they ended up leasing it to the city. And in 1971, they actually sold it to the city. And by then, the city of Lebanon was buying up all the surrounding properties. In 1981, they drained it to rebuild it. And basically that's how the park was born. Camping is not free, but it's cheap. Again, free is hard to find around here, but I think, I think it's like 13 bucks. I didn't end up paying because that guy gave me his permit. Um, you see a lot of different prices listed online, like everything from two bucks a person to $22. So check before you come and also come on a weekday. Cause if you come on the weekend, you're not gonna be able to get a permit. And it seems like the only way to get a permit in person. If you're one of those people who really hates being really close to other people, it's probably not going to be the right place for you. But if you like to fish or kayak, it's an awesome place. Well, I was deciding whether to spend another night here and then I looked at the permit and the permit says no dogs overnight. It's just weird because it seems like it's super dog friendly during the day, but I guess barking maybe, but Captain was a good boy. He was quiet all night, which was awesome. I mean, I broke the rules, but I didn't know I was breaking the rules. If I stay another night, I'll be breaking the rules and knowing that I'm breaking the rules. And I try not to, try not to do that. So I think I'm going to head out. I have to keep reminding myself, there's no deadline. Glad you're with me.